Chris Hayes is an anchor over on MSNBC, the one with the glasses. Hayes' political views aren't very interesting, cringing hipster sensitivity burnished with low-grade academic buzzwords. Pretty banal stuff. But Hayes always seemed like a decent guy personally. He didn't seem like a hater. It was hard to imagine him promoting open racism or anti-Semitism. Or at least it was hard to imagine until the other night. That's when Hayes invited a man called Angelo Carasone onto his show. Carasone runs Media Matters. Almost every day he issues outrage press releases accusing other people of bigotry. And yet, because everything is irony, Carasone is himself an enthusiastic bigot. We know this for sure because he has written about it extensively. It turns out that for years, Carasone maintained a racist blog. One post entitled, quote, Trainee Paradise, addressed a crime story from Thailand. A Bangladeshi man had been robbed and assaulted by a group of male prostitutes dressed as women. Carasone objected to the idea that this was even a story and ridiculed South Asians as inherently ugly and poor. Quote, is the writer a tranny lover too? Or perhaps he's just trying to justify how these trannies trick this Bangladeshi in the first place. Look, man, we don't need to know whether or not they were attractive. The effing guy was Bangladeshi. What the hell was he doing with $7,300 worth of stuff? The guy's Bangladeshi. End quote. In another post, Carasone described how a male coach at a Japanese high school had sexually abused female players. People in Japan were horrified by this, understandably. Carasone was not. His advice, quote, lighten up, Japs. Later that month, Carasone, by now in a frenzy of racism, heaped praise on a former Ku Klux Klan leader. In still another post from the same period, Carasone described a Jewish man as being handsome, quote, despite his Jewry. Carasone didn't like the man's political views, but attributed them to, quote, his possession of several bags of Jewish gold, end quote. Jewish gold. According to Angela Carasone, Jewish gold is a problem. Media Matters probably ought to issue a press release about this. They've done a lot more for a lot less. And yet somehow, and this is the remarkable part, Chris Hayes managed to pretend that none of this ever happened. Hayes never mentioned the Jewish gold. He never said a word about the Japs or the trannies or the Klan or even those dirty Bangladeshis who deserve what they get no matter what the tranny lovers say. None of that. Instead, Hayes gave cover to Carasone's bigotry and anti-Semitism. Amazingly, he even directed his viewers to Carasone's website. Angela, of course, of course all that uh, can be found at Media Matters website, so you can listen to the full clips, get the full context. Right. Pretty well, amazing. Well, if a guy with a history of ranting about Jewish gold came on your show, would you ask him about it? Would you challenge him on it? How could you not? You'd feel morally obligated. But Chris Hayes didn't. That tells you a lot. Now, to be clear, we're not calling for either of these people to be imprisoned or executed or even fired from their high paying jobs. We're not planning to organize an advertiser boycott against them. We won't picket their offices with bullhorns. We won't attack their children. But we do think you should know what they're actually like. And in Chris Hayes's case, it's kind of depressing to find out. Turns out you really never know who people are. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill and he joins us tonight. So Joe, if you went on someone's show to talk about how someone had said naughty things 15 years ago, but you had kept a blog in which you used <laughs> the kind of stereotypes and racial attacks that this guy had and referred to Jewish gold and the Japs, I mean, wouldn't at some point you think this is too hypocritical, I can't do this? I would think that would happen if I knew that the interviewer would challenge me on those things. And apparently, uh, Angelo Carasoni knew that probably in advance that wouldn't happen. And with Chris Hayes's case, it's a classic case of pushing a narrative by engaging in the worst kind of bias, the bias of omission. A disservice completely to MSNBC viewers for, for not showing them. By the way, The Hill has reached out uh, to the Media Matters president for comment, as have many other news organizations. Uh, and he isn't talking. But then again, Tucker, you have to feel sorry for him. I mean, how would you feel if somebody went back into your past and talked about the things that you said 10 or 15 years ago and then demanded that you get taken? <laughs> off the air. I mean, I, I mean, you got to feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> I do. It would be tough. It would be really tough. I mean, look, I yeah. just want to be absolutely clear. I don't care what he wrote on his dumb blog. He's a terrible writer, by the way. I should say that he's kind of dumb, but I don't care. I don't care at all. 
if he hurt an actual person, that would interest me. His dumb opinions interest right. me not at all. So I'm not in any way suggesting that he or anybody else should be punished for what he wrote on some dumb blog 15 years ago. But that's because I'm not a progressive and I'm not hysterical. And, and, but and I just I wonder and I don't why. Care. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, who cares? But how can you use this guy as an expert witness on bigotry with a blog like that? Well, you can't. And, and look, there are even people on the left, Tucker, that are talking about how obscene this is, these fishing expeditions. There's a leftist writer named Freddie DeBoer. He's as left as you are right. He came up with this phenomenal phrase. It's called offense archaeology. And he says, go to any space concerned with social, social justice. You know what you'll find? Endless surveillance. Everyone is to be judged. Everyone is under suspicion. He goes on to say that that's what liberalism is now. The search for baddies doing bad things like little offense archaeologists. Great saying digging deeper and deeper and deeper to find out who's good and who's bad. Nobody likes this, Tucker, on the left or the right, going back into people's past and finding things to destroy their careers. And that's one of the reasons why the actual Hollywood media. tape didn't I mean, resonate with President Trump. Yeah. Well, it's just, and it's disgusting, that whole thing, that way of thinking. But very quick, you've been in this business a long time. I have, too. If there's one group of people who shouldn't be throwing stones about their personal lives, probably the National Press Corps, right? Well, of course, I, no one, I, look, I, we all have done bad things and we could all go back and find something <laughs> that's bad. The bottom line is with Media Matters, they have no leg to stand on here because when MSNBC's Joy Reid made homophobic, anti-Semitic comments, they said it didn't meet the threshold for them to call for oh, yeah. boycotts of her. And now, obviously, that's, that's what's happening with you. And meanwhile, you made some of your statements while you were at MSNBC. And maybe that yeah, was the reason why whatever. it didn't cause a ripple when you did make them on national radio. It wasn't like you said it in private and it was caught on tape somewhere. These were set on national radio. It's amazing. To be clear, they fired me. I couldn't have stayed. Joe, great to see you tonight. Thank yeah. you very much.